This is 20 Strong, a new solo game from Chip Theory Games. In this video, I'll be going over the base set of rules for the system that will carry across all decks, but you'll want to make sure to check out the rules of each individual deck as well before playing. The 20 Strong core box contains the Solar Sentinels deck, one chip, one chip holder, and 20 dice. Within these 20 dice, you'll have three stat dice, four yellow dice, four green dice, four blue dice, four purple dice, and one red die. Each deck in 20 Strong has its own set of rules to supplement what I'm about to go over. If you ever find a deck to have rules that conflict with the core rules, the deck's rules take precedence. To begin playing a game of 20 Strong, you'll first select a deck. Solar Sentinels is what is featured in the core box, so it's what I'll be using for all examples in this video. Each deck in 20 Strong will come with several heroes. Once you've selected a hero, you set your stat dice to the corresponding numbers. These are your starting stats. This is your health stat. This is the amount of damage you can take before losing. This is your strategy stat. This determines how many items you can hold and how many times you can go through the strategy phase each round. And last but certainly not least is your recovery stat. This stat tells you how many exhausted dice you can get back each round. Various effects in game will cause you to increase and decrease these starting stats. Stats are only limited by the number of sides on the die, unless otherwise stated on your hero. That means that any stat can only be increased up to 6 and only decreased to 1. The only exception to this rule is your health, which can be lowered below 1, causing you to lose the game. The stat dice are not rolled. Each deck of 20 strong will also have several bosses. These are the final enemies you must defeat in order to win. And then there are conflict cards. These are the enemies and obstacles that you must face on your adventure. And how exactly are you going to overcome these conflicts and bosses? With your 17 unit dice, of course. Each unit will have a variety of faces. This icon represents a miss. If you roll this face, it means you've missed. You may want to consider re-rolling this die if possible. This represents a basic hit. If you roll a basic hit, you can apply it to a conflict or boss for one damage. And this represents a crit. Each die only has one crit, but if you're lucky enough to roll it, you can apply it to a conflict or boss for two damage. The hit faces in your dice pool of 20 strong vary by color. The odds break down as follows. Yellow have one hit and one crit. Greens have two hits and one crit. Blue have three hits and one crit. Purple have four hits and one crit. And red has five hits and one crit. Dice are considered to be weaker if they have less hits and stronger if they have more. The chip is used differently depending on which deck you're playing. 20 Strong is a game played in rounds, and each round consists of two parts. First is activation. This phase typically requires you to activate the top card from one of the available stacks. Some of the key things to consider when choosing an enemy are its health, how much damage it will deal if undefeated, and any additional effects. If you activate a card with the additional enemies icon, you must immediately add the corresponding amount of enemies from the available stacks. For instance, this symbol adds one more enemy, while this one would add two more. Most enemies in the game will have effects printed on them. Some of these may take effect during activation. Effects with these symbols are active as soon as activated. Cards with the during effect symbol have an impact that remains active until the card is defeated. Cards with the special effect symbol trigger based on the individual card. Make sure to read these carefully as they can differ greatly and may even trigger if their card is defeated. The second part of each round is called engagement and it consists of two phases. The strategy phase, where you'll be selecting, rolling, and applying dice, and the resolve phase, where you suffer damage, exhaust, recover, and gain items. The strategy phase consists of three parts. First is committing dice. This entails selecting which dice you would like to roll from your dice pool. Unless otherwise stated by another effect, you may commit any number and combination of dice. Selected dice are placed in your active area. Next, you roll all of the dice in your active area. 
And finally, it's time to apply hits. Hits are applied one at a time in any order, and you are not required to apply all rolled hits. Rotate any defeated enemies sideways to track their status. Each time a die is applied, check to see if the state of play has changed. For instance, if you defeat an enemy with a during effect, that effect will end immediately. If the enemy has this instant reward symbol, you gain the reward immediately on defeat. Gaining any reward is optional unless otherwise stated. Other types of rewards are not gained at this time, and I will go over them later. After the apply dice step, if your strategy stat is higher than 1, you may repeat the strategy phase. The number of times that you can complete the strategy phase in any engagement is equal to your strategy stat. Each repeat is considered a new strategy phase within the same engagement. When you repeat the commit dice step in a subsequent strategy phase, you may commit additional dice from your dice pool and add them to the unapplied dice still in your active area. You then roll all unapplied dice. Once you have completed all strategy phases, you move on to the resolve phase, which consists of several steps. First is the suffer damage step, in which you total up the damage stats of all undefeated conflict cards and reduce your health stat by that number. Then it's time to resolve any after effects represented by this symbol in the active area, including those on defeated enemies. Next, you exhaust all committed dice, whether applied or not, to your exhausted area. Make sure to keep this area separate from your other dice pool. Next up is recovery. Choose a number of exhausted dice up to the number showing on your recovery stat. Move them from the exhausted area to your dice pool. If any of the defeated conflict cards had item rewards, you may gain the item by placing its card in your inventory. And finally is the cleanup phase. Place all conflict cards that remain in your active area, both defeated and undefeated, in the discard. A final note on items. Single-use items are denoted by the arrow symbol. These items can be used once by discarding the item. Ongoing items are denoted with the infinity symbol. These items have a persistent effect that remain active until the game ends or they are discarded. End game. The trigger for starting the end game differs by deck, but typically involves facing a boss. Boss fights generally take place over several rounds until you either win or your health is depleted and you lose. Unless otherwise stated, you must only defeat the boss to achieve victory. Secondly, undefeated cards remain. Conflict cards that have not yet been defeated remain active and must be faced again in the next round. Dice applied to these undefeated cards are exhausted in the exhaust dice step as normal. Once you have placed enough hits on the boss to defeat it, you have won. Congratulations. And last but certainly not least in this general 20 strong rules video are universal heroes. Universal heroes are heroes that can be used across your 20 strong collection. Heroes that are considered universal are marked with this icon. Why not take Nuggets of Space to slice up some Moonbugs? Maybe introduce Decimus to Barnacle? The 20 strong world is your oyster with universal heroes. That's it for the general rules of 20 strong. If you'd like to learn how a specific deck plays, make sure to check out that specific deck's how to play video. Thanks again for watching and stay strong. 